Hi folks, today I'm going to tie an FNF floating fry. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H950 barbless hook. It's at size 8, it's an extra long shank and it's a heavy gauged wire hook. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's F14 at 8 -0. And as you can six oh sorry, and it's orange. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some adhesive lead foil to the shank of the hook. Now, when I opened uh, this video, if you watched the introduction, you'll have seen I called it the FNF floating fry. So it might seem rather strange that I'm about to add some lead foil. Now all I've done is I've cut a slither off. And I've just loosened up the back here, and I'm going to take that off. Now, if any of you have uh, obviously been up to Rutland, Grafham, or any of these reservoirs where the fish have switched on to, to fry, you'll have noticed that in the margins, or in the weed beds where the fry live, when the trout are chasing them, they're leaping out the water and then smashing back down onto the surface. So initially, when this fly lands on the water, I want it to make an impact. And that's why I'm putting this lead wire on. Sorry, lead, lead foil. To just give it that bit of weight to make a bit of a splash when it lands. The material I'm going to be using for the body is so dense that when it's ginked up, it will float anyway, regardless of this. So, once I've got that on, I'm just going to cover that body with a very thin layer of super glue. And then I can come on with my thread just in behind the eye. And initially, I'm going to lightly come over my foil. And with that layer of super glue on it, it will just bed it in nicely. So I'll catch that in. You can just do it very quickly. And I'm fairly happy with that. That's going nowhere now. So I'll come in and remove my waist. And then I'm going to bring my thread back halfway between the point of the hook and the bend. And the next thing I'm going to do is add in my tailing. So what I'm going to be using for this is um, FNF ATD flash, they call it, uh, 60 millimeters, and it's bait fish pearl. So I'll just take a chunk out the packet. As you can see, it's, it's like light bright actually, and very similar properties to light bright. So I'm going to grab a clump of that. I'm going to just pull out any loose stuff I've got and then I'm going to tidy up the raggedy end there, I don't want to tie in all this. So I'm just off camera snipping that off into a bucket and I'm going to catch that on like so. Now because I've got the um, lead foil there, that's keeping a nice even body. So, fairly happy with that. I'm going to, before I go on to the next part, I'm just going to get some wax onto my thread. Because I'm going to need the grip. Okay, the body then is made up of, in the first part, uh, rubber Daphnia Fritz. This is Flow Egg White. And just before I pick away at this, I'll just try and show you. It's like a, a very tight knit, tight knit weave, and it's got some rubber strands through it. Uh, it would probably make an excellent egg fly as well, which uh, I'll have a go at down the line. But at the minute, I'm going to concentrate on tying this fry pattern. And what I've done is I've exposed a little bit of the core, which I'm going to catch in just at the end here and I'll bring my thread 
just stop to a little over the halfway mark and park it there. Now, the first turn of this, I want to do it so that it comes under my tail. So I'm going to flick that back and I'm going to bring a turn over behind the tail. Then I can pull that up and come immediately behind the tail now. And what that does is just kicks the fibres up at the back here, which I'll want later on. Now, just like you're tying a blob, you want to sweep it back with your thumb and forefinger and try and keep the motion going. You want to st stack this in as tightly as possible because this is what's going to give you that buoyancy later on. Once you've trimmed it with your scissors, which you'll come on to, um, you want it to be nice and thick and dense. A bit like myself. <laughs> and I'll get another one turn in there. Maybe one more. It's really tight. It's not so much fly tying as a wrestling match, this a bit. Um, you really got to give it some to get to get this to pack in tightly. So I've got it in with a couple of turns. I'll come in with my snips. Just looking for the core. And I can then pull that back as best I can. And what I want to do is just clear a little space for my next ingredient, which is going to be the rubber Daphnia Fritch in Flow Orange. I've already taken a little bit out of the bag, which I've got here. Again, you can just imagine this is an egg fly and I'm definitely going to tie a few up, maybe with a, a um, tungsten beading uh, to sink it, because I think it will take a bit of sinking, to be honest. So I'm just going to expose the core a little. And maybe just a bit too much there. And then I can come in and catch that on. Now, I don't want to park my thread right at the eye. I want to be about two millimeters back for the eye. And this time, I'm going to just try and blend in the orange with the white. I'm right on top of it. And again, you've really got to put quite a lot of st stress on the hook. So make sure when you're putting it into the vise that you uh, make sure it's secure. And by secure, I don't mean like just hand tight. It's really got a bit, I've really clamped it in here. So I brought it to the front and because it's so thick, it really is difficult to, to get your thread around it. So once you think you've got it clamped down, and I think I'm there now, make sure you get your thread in front of the material. And again, you can come in and snip that away. Now, I know it looks a bit like a hot mess at the minute, but we're going to sort all that out. And what you want to do next is just get a couple of turns in there. Then all I'm going to do is you can add some head cement or varnish. I'm going to use some UV resin to your thread. Then bring in your whip finish tool. Sweep all the bits and bobs back. And then you can finish the fly off. Once you've done that, you can take your thread away. Don't forget to come in with your torch and cure it off. So, so far so good. I know it looks a bit uh, like a decaying minnow at the minute, but we're going to tidy all that up. So essentially that's the, the fly time part of this video over. What we're going to move on to next is my ability to cut hair. So as you can see, the material has completely obscured the hook and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to invert my vise initially. I've got the vise inverted and what I'm going to do is initially come along the bottom and take quite a considerable amount of the material away. Now, if you're working in your in your dining room, you want to try and just keep the material in your hand so that you're not um, going to really annoy your better half because there's nothing worse than having fly tie material all over your dining room as I've found this week <laughs> um, yeah I've been getting into a bit of trouble for that so just make sure that you take your time now so initially what I wanted to do was free up the barb um, the point of the hook here and I'm still not happy that I've got enough of that so I'm just going to come in a bit firmer and take that away now this bottom cut for me is the key cut so getting the hook point um, exposed so that it does hook the fish is the most important part now, now that that's done what I'm going to do next is speed up the video so that you don't have to watch me trimming away at the rest of it Okay, I'm back. Um, so you can you can really take as much or as little time as you like with this. Once you think you've finished trimming it, we've got to tidy up the tail a little bit. So I'm just going to take approximately two centimeters of the tails left, which will come out the back there. And I'll probably still come in and tweak this because I just can't let it go me. Um, but eventually you'll get to a point where you're happy with the trimming. Next, come in with your dubbing brush and just fluff it out a little bit. And again, like I'm still not happy with the shape here. So I'm just going to come in and tidy it up. If you're not happy, it will just pick away at you, and it does me anyway. So I'm just going to keep going until I'm content that I've got that shape. There we go. Not, not quite as perfect as I'd like, but... Uh, I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, so I'm going to call that as good as done. Uh, next, I'm going to add the eyes, and what I'm using is some epoxy eyes. They're medium 5mm eyes from Vineyard. I've already taken them out of the packet. So the first one, I'm going to just tilt the vise my way, and add the eye to your side. Now they do stick on, but they're not very um, adhesive, is what I would say. So although they say adhesive eyes, I find that they, they, they wouldn't survive contact, these a couple of casts and they'd be off. So to get round that, what I always do when I'm, I'm doing these eyes, is I cover them in epoxy, epoxy resin. And what this will always also do is help me out with the splash that I talked about earlier. So I've just tilted it on its side. Got a fairly generous drop of UV resin on here and that'll soak in and around the eye. Try and keep the fibres out of the eye but make sure you get plenty of resin around that eye and I often give this um, several coats actually but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, for the purpose of the video but if you do get round to tying these up I would suggest you give this three or four coats of resin around the eyes and it'll just help protect your pattern I'm still picking away at this huh? 
then on my side and we'll cue that off now if you were of a mind to you could come in with pro markers and uh, this material will take a bit of colour. Still not particularly happy with the shape I've got on this one, but uh, for the purposes of government work, and I have probably done it a little faster than I would like uh, for the sake of the video. But there we go. That's uh, the F and F floating fry. I'm sure it will get a, a swim at the back end of September when the fish are hard onto the fry patterns, and I dare say it will catch me a few fish. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button and I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you all next time.